everybody. DB King's in town. Got a dollar quarter, just rare in the clown. But don't let nobody play me cheap. I got a fool that I'm gonna keep. B.B. King is the king of the blues. Since the late 1940s, he's released over 50 albums, many of them considered blues classics. He's made the cause of preserving the blues his lifetime work. B.B. is recognized as the ambassador who almost single-handedly brought the blues out from the fringe of the American music spectrum and into its mainstream. According to B.B. King, the blues is the mother of American music, and his enthusiasm for playing it is greater today than ever. I think I enjoy it even more today because then it was just kind of like plaything. You go and you have fun and you know you don't think too much about it. But today it's important to me. Very important to me today because I feel there's a lot of young musicians paying attention to what we're doing and some of them maybe look up to us for the things that we do so that's important to me so I want to do my best nightly King was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in 1980 and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. Not bad for someone who grew up on a cotton plantation in Mississippi. For many of our friends, they know you as the greatest uh, guitar player, one of the greatest in the world, but they don't know what BB stands for. Blues boy. Okay. <laughs> How did you adopt that name? Well, I was a disc jockey starting in 49. From 49 through 55, I was with a radio station in Memphis, Tennessee, WDIA. I can tell you they don't come up here. <laughs> okay. uh, WDIA from 49 through 55. And um, they used to bill me as the boy from Bill Street, the blues boy. And people usually would abbreviate it. And instead of saying uh, blues boy, they'd just say BB. Over the years, as King's legacy continued to grow, so did the legend of his guitars, he affectionately refers to as Lucille. I used to play a place in Arkansas, a little town about 45 miles northwest of Memphis. Uh, it's called Twift, Arkansas. And we used to play there quite often. In winter, it got quite cold. So they used to take something that looked like a big garbage pail half fill it with kerosene, set it in the middle of the dance floor, and they would light that fuel, and that's what we use for heat. And generally, people would dance around it, uh, never disturb it. But one night, two guys started to fight, and one knocked the other one over on this container. When he did, it spilled on the floor. When it spilled on the floor, it's already burning, so it looked like a river of fire, and everybody started to run for the front door, including B.B. King. <laughs> but when I got on the outside, I realized then that I left my guitar inside. The building was a wooden building, burning rapidly, so as I started back to try to get my guitar, it was collapsing around me. I almost lost my life trying to save my guitar. But the next morning, we found that these two guys was fighting, was fighting about a lady that worked in the little nightclub. I never did meet her, but I learned that her name was Lucille. I named my guitar Lucille to remind me never to do a thing like that again. So with Lucille in hand, B.B. toured the world many times over. Along the way, his talent has influenced the likes of Eric Clapton, George Harrison, and Jimi Hendrix. Yet, even today, B.B. gets a kick out of the magnitude of Lucille's popularity. I was doing a commercial for a Japanese company, and uh, I think it was called Maxell. And when they came, uh, that I was up in uh, Nevada, up in Reno, Nevada, so when they came that day to get the guitar, I thought they was getting me and the guitar, and they called me as if they was calling for my daughter and says, Mr. King, is Lucille ready? <laughs> I said, don't I go? They said, no, we don't want you. We want your guitar. Bend down, hearted baby. Every since the day we met. Besides touring, King often takes time out to make cameo appearances on the silver screen. You may remember B.B.'s recent appearance in the hit sequel, Blues Brothers 2000. As a true ambassador, King was chosen by the Rolling Stones to open 18 American concerts for them. He later went on to play in many Tina Turner concerts. Today, blues is now performed in the most prestigious venues and in front of audiences whose introduction to the blues often stems back to the first time they heard B.B. King. Do, do you feel any pressure about being the ambassador 
of that form of music in this country that we call the blues? No, I, I feel honored. I feel honored. Uh, for people to think of me along those lines makes me very happy. Guitar legend B.B. King has influenced the likes of Eric Clapton and even Jimi Hendrix. However, at 73 years old, he shows no signs of slowing down, as he remains the ambassador in this country to a style of music we call the blues. For Special Edition, I'm Mickey Burns. <laughs>